Ryan's on the phone. Uh -oh. Hey, Hi, how Paul. you doing? Hey, good, good to meet you, Paul. Yeah, yeah likewise. Like, like your place. This place is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, what, yep, when did you get started? Uh, about 18 months ago, I guess. Okay. So I was out in Spain and met um, a friend of mine, a very successful business guy, and he just came back from Italy. And he caught the buzz about Rossi. He didn't meet him or anything, but he told me, he's like, hey, this is a crazy thing going on, and there might be something here. And I started looking into it, and then just like slowly, 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 it's like, Maybe I'm not so crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> how is this possible that I end up in Korea? <laughs> Tell them about the story. I'll tell you ended up in Korea. So this was really weird. So have you seen the paper that I put out? He, he probably um, the kind of Eleanor proof. It's like yep. the yeah. So I wrote that and like basically for my own sanity. You know, like could this possibly be? You know, how am, I, how am I the only idiot that knows about this world changing thing? So I wrote this thing, and then, like, on a Friday night, I put it on SharePoint for a couple of my uh, investors in my company who are also big investors in, mm -hmm. uh, like, natural gas and solar and basically trying to advise them to get out, you know, like. Yeah. So I put it there on Friday. I wake up the next morning on Saturday. Somehow someone had picked up on it and, like, published a story about it. And so I wake up Saturday morning and I'm like the headline. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what? <laughs> you know? And then on Monday, I get a call from the Navy Spaywar uh, Division, Frank yeah. Gordon, and he's like, can you come to Korea and present this? And I'm like, absolutely. You know, like, <laughs> I'm, let me see if I can check flights. And then the next day, I get a call from the Pentagon from the chief of staff of the Navy at the Pentagon. Really? Asking me what I knew about this. And I'm like, this is all just absolutely surreal, right? <laughs> Something like, if this isn't the universe telling me I have to go to Korea, like, I don't know what is, you know. Wow. That's pretty cool. Wow. And then, well, he probably told the rest of the story out in Korea. But, well, maybe not all the story, I'm hoping. <laughs> not all of it, no. <laughs> there's, there's a couple pieces left out. <laughs> we'll save that until the camera's off. <laughs> the battery case so I do got. you think this guy's crazy or what? Nope. Changing the world? I thought he was. Nope. I thought he was, yeah. but not anymore. It's amazing, isn't it, when you like peel off a couple layers and you're like, why is the whole scientific community not going nuts over this? You know, yeah, these yeah. arrived here, we're looking at them, and we're like, that's it? I've picked bigger hairs out of my food. And that's caused us months of intense work. This is going to change the world? Yeah, exactly. This humble little squiggle. So, so this is just, is it like a nickel alloy then, or? It's um, isotan wire, mm -hmm. which is uh, nickel, copper, 50, it's a 5544 with a 1% uh, manganese. Hey, Bob. How are you? How's it going? I'm uh, fine, Bob McLean. Hey, good to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. Bob's our COO here. Um, or, or a coot. We, we keep him safely in the uh, other building, you know, out of the shop. You crack the whip? No, I, th I think they keep themselves safely keeping me out of here because they don't want <laughs> to touch anything that might break. So they, <laughs> That's I, why I'm surprised they brought me in. That's, well, you know, I, I can appreciate that they let at least one business person at a time come in here, so maybe I should step out. <laughs> I don't know this environment can take more than one. So now you're reloading it up again? Uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. just about to. Now. We have to mix it 25-75 up to 3.5 bar, so that means 0.87, which is below atmospheric, so we're back in the first. We'll put in 0.87 bar of argon, and then we'll put in the rest of the 3.5. Uh, so what goes into the calibration? So there's like 10 different runs, or you're on yeah. step four or step five? Yeah, we're on, we're at, we've gone through the helium calibrations. Now so we're calibrating, nice. right now, This the setup that we're putting in here, it's going to be the same configuration, except for that one wire that we'll be loading the Chelani wire at. So we want to do a lot of runs at this level to see what kind of variation there is. We want to heat with both wires independently at different times and uh, verify that uh, have a good baseline. So are you are you going through the whole sequence? So basically, exactly what you would do if it was a finished product, heat it up to the 260 or whatever your 300, wherever you're bringing. We're we're actually ramping up through the whole temperature range. Air temperature or uh, ambient temperature up to maximum temperature. Okay. And uh, we're doing that in 16 steps. And then we'll fit that, fit a curve to that. So we say we'll use that curve 
and uh, to that's compare your baseline. Right. So at this power, we expect this temperature. And then as we are doing the uh, uh, final, or as we're doing the run of the real wire, we'll watch where we are in that curve. And for this power, if we're above the temperature that we expect, we're going to start calling that excess power. Yep. Output that they're able to get. I figure so. with the res the accuracy we're getting on our temperature curve, we should be good to uh, probably with plus or minus two to three percent. Uh, so if we get more than three percent, it should be a really, really good solid. signal. Yeah, five percent or over would be very comfortable. Uh, what do you what do we think we'll heat. get? Uh, Chalani was showing um, twenty two watts. I don't know. He's showing 18 watts. Did he get up to 22? I we think that there? was the peak, but I think okay. the average was right around 18. Yeah, so if we get 18 watts, it should make a clear signature on ours. Yeah. And uh, they'll still be skeptics. And uh, they probably will, won't mind until they get, or they probably won't mind until they get their own, but this should be better than 3%. We'll, you know, we'll it should send be one to Popular Science. Drop ship it to the editor. Here you go. We'll send him tickets. <laughs> Come here and see it. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just about to uh, uh, change the gas in the, uh, the cell for the next calibration. What happened is the pressure went down uh, far enough that we wanted to reset the pressure to pretty much exactly where it was uh, when we started the last cycle. Okay. So that's what we're about to do. Yeah, we got the needle valve on this side of it. You got to open it and close it really quickly because if there's, you know, we're above atmospheric in the line. So if you let it too much, then you just got to vacuum it and start over, basically. Yep. So, so for that, i got to look back and forth at the computer. Just see if you want to help, actually. Do you want to watch the pressure? Yeah. How the pressure is? Yeah. So we're looking here for 0.875. Okay. 4.3. Close enough. No? He's going to do it closer. I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay, 877. 877. There you go. That's it. All that good. Okay.